you're one of the world's experts on water fasting as a tool to reverse chronic disease and significantly improve metabolic health. So can you provide our viewers living with all forms of diabetes with a little bit of a background on what fasting exactly is and why it's so beneficial for improvements in metabolic health? Well, sure. Fasting is the complete abstinence of all substances except water in an environment of complete rest. And it's a unique biological adaptation. It gives the body a chance to rapidly reverse many of the conditions associated with dietary excess. And uh, diabetes happens to be one of those. You know, you have a situation where people have adequate insulin, but insulin's not working well uh, because of insulin resistance. And dietary excess is thought to be one of the major contributing causes of that resistance. So it's not surprising that uh, fasting would be uh, a useful tool at reversing the consequences of dietary excess. And that's exactly what we find. Conditions like type 2 diabetes, uh, like high blood pressure, autoimmune diseases, and some forms of cancer like lymphoma happen to respond exceptionally well to this period of uh, this biological adaptation of fasting. So when you say like nothing but water and rest, that means, and for how, how long can somebody do that? Well, we say nothing but water and rest in, you know, in an environment of supervision. So this isn't something we're recommending people do willy-nilly, because there's obviously some important parameters that people go through to determine who's a good candidate for fasting and to set up at the baseline. For example, anybody before they would undergo fasting would want to have a review of their medical history of physical exam and some baseline lab work done so that you could tell the difference between a good thing that's happening in fasting and a bad thing. So, you know, fasting is a safe and natural process, but it's not absolute protection against things going wrong, particularly in patients that are on medications or dealing with complex medical management situations. Uh, fasting at the True North Health Center ranges from five to 40 days. Uh, uh, we, we typically do not do uh, extended fast beyond 40 days because they get a lot more metabolically complicated. Um, but it, it really does vary depending on the patient. It's not condition specific, it's patient specific. So one patient, for example, with diabetes may undergo a period of fasting for 10 days. Another patient may undergo a period of fasting for 40 days. Uh, and some people, uh, they may be able to resolve their issue. For example, high blood pressure may be resolved in a single fast. Another patient, there might be two or three fasts over a period of time in order to get their condition adequately resolved. And unfortunately, we don't always know precisely in advance how long that's going to be. We know really well in hindsight, we're brilliant. But in terms of predicting exactly what's going to happen, is there's a little bit of a limitation there right now. Even though we're actively involved in doing some clinical research, looking at biomarkers and ways of predicting these things, that research is really virgin data right now. Uh, we're one of the few places in the world that is actively engaged in evaluating uh, long-term water-only fasting and what its effects have on all the various biomarkers that have been discovered. So yeah, so speaking of your research, can you, can you go into some of the stuff you published? I know you have published some work. Yeah, absolutely. We've, we've been very fortunate in, in the research department. The True Health Foundation, which is a 501c3 nonprofit research organization uh, that's affiliated with us, has uh, done a good job. We've published a number of papers in the peer review literature, like medically supervised water only fasting in the treatment of hypertension and in the treatment of borderline hypertension. We've also published papers looking at uh, the effect of fasting on diabetes, as well as uh, cost of care outcomes. We've recently completed, submitted uh, a paper on uh, the fasting safety analysis. So we looked at five years uh, of fasting patients and all, their all-cause mortality complications. We're able to show that fasting, when it's done appropriately, can be a safe and effective tool. That's going to be significant as that paper is released because it'll open it up not only for us, but for all other researchers interested in looking at fasting, they'll, they'll be able to get human subjects approval uh, to do that. Up till now, it was considered so outrageous that you know, the mortality would be too high or something. They were just nervous about it. But that, this paper will hopefully change that. We're also doing a study with Luigi Fontana at the Washington University uh, in conjunction with the Buck Institute here, which is an anti-aging research center in Novato. And we've just completed the first trial where 21 subjects were evaluated before and then after prolonged water-only fasting. And what they're looking at are things like the number of mutations inside the lymphocytes, autophagy itself, the efficiency of these cells at eating up cancer cells and other, other problems, all kinds of non-invasive biomarkers and changes in the gut microbiome. 
people have, you know, five pounds of bacteria living in their intestinal tract, which is, it's like an organ, you know, think about it. And it's very important to protecting us from outside agents, internal agents, producing materials like vitamin K, et cetera. So the, the gut microbiome is an important part of our immune response. And it often gets disrupted because people take antibiotics or they do things to disrupt the, the microbiome, not the least of which is eating a very poor diet. And when you think about it, when you have five pounds of organisms living in your gut, they're a living organism and they have waste products. They have bacterial poo. And if that poo is toxic, if you produce TMA, which becomes TMAO, and you get heart disease and cancer, that's a bad thing. But if your bacteria produces fertilizer, like vitamin K and other essential nutrients, that's a good thing. So we want the bacteria in our gut to be giving us fertilizer instead of toxic waste. And the way you control that is with essentially prebiotics, that is what you put in your mouth. And if you feed the bacteria in your gut soluble fibers, like underground storage organ vehicles and vegetables, you get fertilizer. If you feed it meat, fish, fowl, eggs, dairy products, highly processed foods, you tend to get toxic waste. So we're trying to look not only at the type of bacteria that live in the intestinal tract, the thousands of different strains, but also what are they giving off and how does fasting affect that whole cycle? So that's, again, all kind of new data, but it's something that we're actively involved with.